Um, what was your reaction when you heard yesterday? Yeah, do you know, I wasn't that surprised, Laura. I just felt, you know, he hadn't been played, gone to America, didn't play very much, you know, came off the bench in the final and, and scored a goal, and, you know, but only got sort of a little cameo part, 10 minutes to go. I don't know. I just thought, where's he go from here? Is he going to stick it out in America? Or would he want to go back to Spain and live? I don't know where we put his roots down. So I wasn't over, I wasn't shocked, you know, um, but he's achieved everything there is. What, I mean, what a career is that. It's just been amazing. Harry, it has been amazing. And it's funny it's listening to you there because I'm, I, I get, get a strange feeling. I've got nothing but the utmost respect for what he's achieved. You know, five Champions Leagues, three other leaguers. Yeah. What he did with Wales was unbelievable. And some of the individual performance with you boys over in Milan and the overhead kick and all that. But there is an element of me, and I, I, I'm wondering if you can understand. I wanted to see a little bit more. Now, I don't know Gareth Bale's body. I don't know whether it's just kind of gave up on him and he, he found it difficult to keep going. But I just wanted to see a little bit more towards the last, <clears throat> towards the end of his career. Yeah, I suppose the last few years, you know, he sort of, you know, played bit parts, hardly played, you know, even with Wales, is he going to play? You know, he's had bits and pieces where, but if, I don't know. I, this is, is a, it's, he's different, Ali, in so much, you know, you've been in the dressing room with lads who are, you know, they're vocal or they've got mm -hmm. big puss. He's a very, very quiet lad. He just got on with his football. He wasn't one that was going to be out on the training ground after training and wanting to work and practice he was just such a natural it just came easy to him really he just had that unbelievable ability to to be able to run and to shoot and just, it just it was just so easy for him the game and um i don't know whether you know if, if obviously he'd made so much money and made incredible contracts and in the end he, he obviously wasn't playing you know nowhere near the stand that he was a few years ago and maybe thought well you know i can I'll call it a day, but uh, he certainly has had an absolutely fantastic career. There's no doubt about that. Harry, tell me a bit more about him when he was a bit younger, when you were managing him, because is it true that you nearly sold him at one point? No, uh, no, never, ever, Laura, <laughs> was he ever going to leave. Honestly, never. I've heard that story. We, someone <laughs> might have rung up and, and said, oh, can we loan him or something? And then they go, and then when he becomes a superstar, you know, whoever the manager was might tell people, oh, I nearly loaned him once. They never nearly loaned him because Tottenham were never, ever going to let him go. He was, he, the profile of, the, of Gareth was everything that Daniel wanted. He was a young player. You know, he bought him as a young player from Southampton uh, and everybody knew he had a great future. I first came across him at Southampton, um, you know, as a, a youth team player. And, and even then you looked at him, but my God, this kid's got everything. The physique of him, the way he can run, the way he can sprint, the way he can shoot, he can head it. He could do absolutely everything. It was so natural and so easy for him. That, but there was no way we were ever going to let him go. Not a chance. I mean, I moved him from left back to left wing at that time. But as I said before, he'd have been the left, best left back in the world if he'd have stayed there and played there for a spell, you know. Um, he, he just was so natural. Tell me about that because I, I find it difficult to believe. And, and like some of my, my kind of younger boys can't believe that he actually was a left back at one point. He was amazing. He could have been an amazing left back, Ali. Yeah, I mean, I remember going to play Benfica one night and in a pre-season game, and he kept picking the ball up from the goal. You know, the goalie would roll it out to him, and the next second he's on their byline or having a sh in their penalty box having a shot or a cross at goal. You know, off he went on a run and run like 70, 80 yards with a ball, and he kept doing it from left back. Um, but, you know, I just felt at that time it, to get him further forward where he didn't have to worry defensively. And I had a good left back at Tottenham in Benwell, Esso Okotu. And so it suited everybody to push him forward one and let him free him off and play, you know. Eventually, we moved him inside, Ali. He came off the line and we played him in a free position. Uh, and the crowd used to sing to me, is Gareth Bale, he plays on the left. They didn't like it because he was wandering around. They're trying to tell me, why are you, why are you letting him wander around and pick it up? In, you know, is Gareth Bale, he plays on the left. You know, oh, OK, fine. And then he'd go bang, bang, score two goals from where he was playing in the middle, you know. <laughs> um, we were speaking to James Collins earlier on and we were asking what he was like in training and he just said, oh my goodness, he was just out of this world on another level. Um, when he was younger, what was he like in training? Yeah, every, everything was so easy for him, Laura. As I say, he wasn't a lad who's, 
who's going to be out there after training like Harry Kane would be and spend another hour training and practicing his shooting and doing whatever it, he wasn't. He, he it was just he was just it was so easy for him. It was he everything was natural for him. You know he just had that ability. Six foot three, whatever he was, could just run long distance sprint. He could just it was too easy. It was it was such an easy could strike a ball like you good in the air. Yeah, just a fantastic all round footballer, really, and a great lad. Not a minute's problem. Not a minute's problem. Yeah. He wouldn't, have, but he wouldn't have got in your gang, Ali. That's for sure. <laughs> he was, he'd have got he, a game. He might not get in the gang. He'd, but he'd, he'd got he'd, a game. <laughs> he'd have got a game, but you know, he, he wouldn't have been. He wouldn't have had a night out with you because <laughs> he, he just didn't. He was just a very much a very quiet, a very yeah. family man. He, you know, he wouldn't be out if the lads were having a night out or gonna go. He, uh, he would. He wouldn't be there. It didn't interest him. When you see at the at the end of his career, last few years, where um, he was very much on the bench for Real Madrid for a long time, and he had a, a difficult relationship with the Spanish press in particular, he held up that sign as well about his priorities in football. And Real Madrid were last behind Wales and, yeah. and golf. What did you make of all of that? I can't say I liked the the uh, the, the banner much. You know, I didn't. If, I thought you know, I, no, it wouldn't have been something that I'd have looked at if you was a Real Madrid. Real Madrid's a fantastic football club. Uh, uh, yeah, I found that a little bit n- not great, but uh, other than that, I don't think he's got a blemish on his career. Really, he's never—I don't ever see him ever having been a problem or caused a problem to anybody or whatever. He's, um, and it was sad how, yeah, at the end he just was out the picture there. But whenever he played or whenever he came on or did whatever, he performed. He'd score goals, and you know, even when he went to Tottenham, you know, I thought he was—I thought he was a great signing for Tottenham. But he didn't get to play. Jose was there, mm. didn't pick him, bought him off the bench <clears> five to <throat> ten minutes ago. When he started him, he'd take him off very early in the game. And then the last bit of the season, they played him on a more regular basis and suddenly he ended up going, scoring two at Leicester, I think two against Southampton. He was just incredible. He, yeah, he's just an amazing talent, really. He just one, you know, one of the world's best players we've seen, you know. And I, I do feel he was the third best player in the world in that long period, for a long period behind Messi and Ronaldo. He'd, he'd have been the next on the list for me. Harry, tell me, <clears throat> we've all got memories of, you know, top players having great individual performances, right? One of the best I can remember, uh, uh, and you were privy to it, was Bale's performance in the San Siro that night. I mean, that was nothing yeah. short of majestic. What did you say to him after that game? Well, it was uh, to be honest, Ali. You know, we lost our goal. We, we the keeper got sent off early in the game, and we were four 0 down. I remember Tim Sherwood, you know, saying to me at half time, "Harry, you know, one, I think we ought to take one or take Gareth off, take one or two off. You know, we got a Saturday. What do you think? Maybe rest them. We ain't going to win the game." I said, "No, we ain't going to win it, but we might get beat nine nil if we do that." Yeah. You know, and I didn't want to do that. And I, I went, "No, I left him on." And second half, I mean. Incredible. What he did to Michael was just unreal, and 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 the amazing thing we came back and played them at home, you know, obviously in the in the return game, in the in the Champions League, and uh, they left Michael one against one, left him isolated. They I thought they'd double up on him and play, uh, even play another right back in front of him, or play a certain defensive player in front of Michael to help him out, but they played very narrow and left him to be roasted. It was over. You know, and he destroyed him. Finished, he finally almost finished his career, and the crowd was singing "Taxi for Mike" on all that. You know, <laughs> Harry, I'm not sure about almost finish it. To be quite honest with you, <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, no, he was amazing. But no, as I say, Alan, not only he was a great player and, and a smashing lad. Not mm. not one second of a I could ever remember having a problem with him. Never, just got on with his own game, played, got the ball, went off 50, 60 yard runs, shooting. He'd just pull a game out of a bag for you, you know. Yeah. If you were struggling, he'd get it and suddenly drop his shoulder, bang, top corner. Amazing. Yeah. Um, Harry, I've got to ask you before we let you go about this massive game that we've got coming up. North London derby this weekend, Tottenham yeah. hosting Arsenal. Last time they met at your stadium, um, a big 3-0 win for Tottenham over Arsenal. How do you think it's going to go this time? Well, I must admit, this is a fantastic Arsenal team. Laura, I, 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 you, you've got to enjoy watching them play. The football is just amazing. They play with two great wingers. You know, they've got movement up front. Odegaard, I just think he's so special. I just love the way they play the game at the moment. You can't, you can't fault Arsenal. So it's going to be a tough game. They're going to come into the game, obviously, this time as favourites. And uh, 
But Tottenham at home, you know, they'll, they'll be dogged. They'll be difficult to break down. And they've got Harry Kane. So, and when you've got Harry Kane, you've always got a chance in any game. So it's, it's, it's got the makings of a fantastic match. I can't wait for it. Yeah, it really does. All right, Harry, great to speak to you. Harry, great to talk, mate. I'm just off for a golf lesson, Ali. I'm trying to get down from 18 to scratch. <laughs> well, you'll be there about a year and a half, mate. That's going to be some lesson. Later. That's going to be some lesson, that, Paul. <laughs> See you guys. See you later. <laughs> Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods. Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.